Hey guys, George Soundtracks here. This week we're going to talk about one of the features that's built into our Tsunami 2 and our Blue Nami decoder, and it does have functionality in our Econami decoder as well. This is what's known as grade crossing logic. We're going to talk about what it is and what it does for your models here and how to set it up. So let's get started. Now crossing logic is one of those things that ha makes things happen such as sound effects or lighting effects when the crossing logic or when the horn is blown. So the whole point of this is as you're approaching a crossing. Now one of the most common ones we have right here in front of us is this Amtrak P42. Now the most common use of this is for our lighting effects. And so on this model we pull out our side here, we, tur we have our ditch lights on, you can see that. Now when we blow the air horn you see that it also starts to flash the lights. And now this is what's known as crossing logic. This causes the lighting effect to take place when the horn is blown, aka approaching a crossing. So this logic can be applied to many of the lighting effects, including things like the Mars lights, gyro lights, the strobe lights, and of course the ditch lights. So all of these lighting effects do have an ability to work with crossing logic. So take a look at your prototypes and see how it works and use it that way. But one of the other things it does is it allows you to trigger the grade crossing bell. Now when I blow the longhorn and I release, you can hear the bell continue to apply. And that's the grade crossing bell. Now, in our Tsunami 2, these are set up by CVs, but we're going to go ahead and show you using the Blue Nami today. So we're going to go ahead and click on our gear icon. We're going to go to sound settings. First, I'm going to mute the locomotive so you can hear me a little better. We're going to go to sound settings, main sounds. And as you scroll up here, you see this Graham White electronic bell. And we have our volume and reverb settings, but you don't see crossing logic. That's because this is considered one of these uh, other settings. So when we go down to other settings, you see here that we have grade crossing bell enable. And we can click on that and we can either enable it or disable it. And what that does is it auto triggers the bell to happen as soon as the long horn is played. Now when we go to the lighting effects, let's go back, we'll go to light effects, and right now FX3 is one of our ditch lights. We'll go ahead and enter this. So now you see our lighting effect is ditch light type 1. We have our phase selection, and then right there, grade crossing logic enabled. And that lets us know that that particular lighting effect is going to be modified when you blow the horn. Now there's a couple of other factors to go along with grade crossing. Towards the bottom here, you'll see other settings. And we click on this, and this has to do with our flash rate. And this determines, in this case, how fast the flashes between the two ditch lights go. You can adjust it. Lower numbers equal a faster flash rate. Personally, on this locomotive, I like a value of 7. Your perception may vary, and so therefore you can change that to whatever you want. But the second setting there is the one that's the most important, grade crossing hold time. And that determines how long the effect for grade crossing is going to play. In this case, you can see that we have 6 seconds. But we can go ahead and cycle in here, and we can go all the way up to 15 seconds. And that will just determine how long the effect plays. So we're going to go ahead and leave it at 6. So now when we're going to unmute, we're going to blow our horn, we're going to count to six, and you're going to see that the lighting effect and the bell turn off after six seconds. Just like that. Now, when it comes to building our decoders, we wanted to make sure we had that extra element of real railroading built into the locomotives. Now, in a lot of modern locomotives, they do still use whistle signals. For example, two longs moving forward, three short when moving in reverse, and things like that. Now, when you're in the cab of a locomotive, when you blow the horn and you hear that bell ringing all the time, it gets to be a little overwhelming and a little annoying when you're sitting in the cab. This is real railroader experience talking. So what we did with our grade crossing logic was we decided to go ahead and throw the railroaders a bone. Because a lot of times they'll try to quickly hit that horn button fast enough to get the horn signal played, but not fast enough to trigger the relay, which triggers the bell sound. So what we did in our short horn sound effect, we had the grade crossing logic not happen. So now when I blow the short horn, 
you'll notice that no bell and no lights are flashing. Now I can do this all day long. So I can get my three short when I'm moving in reverse and I don't have to listen to the bell. But when I hit the longhorn for the grade crossing, now you hear that bell. The same thing will happen when I hit the grade crossing. So down here on function nine, when I push the grade crossing sequence, you hear that bell. And the bell timer will start the second that the air horn lets off. So it's six seconds after the air horn is released. So as long as you're holding the air horn on, whether it be a Tsunami 2 through your DCC system or the Blue Nami through the app, you can sit there and hold that and the bell will ring during the air horn process and then release. Now one little odd fun fact for you is there are competitors products out there that when you have the bell on and blow an air horn, you actually get a sound of a second bell. Ours is done in such a way to make sure that you don't get two bells playing when you blow the air horn if your bell is actually playing. This is just some of the many ways that Soundtracks make sure that our Tsunami 2 and our Blue Nami products work best the first time for you out of the box to make sure you get the best experience possible. Now for more information on this and all the other cool features in our Tsunami 2 and our Blue Nami, be sure to check out the user's guide at Soundtracks.com. Check out the manuals and start with chapter one. Make sure you read what all the features are and how they work so that that way when you're making your adjustments, you know what you're making. And also be sure to like and subscribe to this video and we'll see you next time.